And you'll be thrilled to know also Ken Hinckley is going to join us oh. on the program. Yeah. Uh, another one on your dartboard? <laughs> no, not, not, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Tell us about this, Bill. Oh, it was good. A very good win by Port Adelaide because uh, it looked like uh, St Kilda might win this game. But, gee, they had a lot of injuries, Kane, haven't they? They've got plenty of injuries. They've got their young stars. They're all out injured. And I thought this was a good win in the end here. Uh, Charlie Dixon does kick a goal coming up here very shortly. Uh, that was a good mark by Maisie, who we hadn't seen all day. Took a couple. Have a look at Charlie Waltz around here. Poor old Dougal's like <laughs> the witches that cap off. Dude, it's what are you doing? But uh, pretty good win. Oh, they'd be happy with that, Kane. Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was their best win of the year. Yes, they haven't beaten those top echelon sides, but the Saints have been in good form. And when you mm. look at the players that they had out, uh, speak about Hawthorne's injuries. What about Port small forwards? Butters? Fantasia, Farrell, Motlop, yeah. Rosie, Gray. There's six or seven of you starting forward line. So he put aim on forward, was good. He experimented with Darcy Byrne-Jones forward. Terrific win, Port Adelaide's best of the year. Mm. I was at the game and I felt that uh, they had all the run late. St Kilda, they had 10 more inside 50s. Uh, they were starting to hit the scoreboard hard and then they just started to turn the footy over at crucial time. So look at the time clock there. There's 10 minutes to go. Oh. They were up by a point and Brad Hill, who played a good game, just made right. some poor errors. So there was one... Look so now scores are level, turnover. So they're just were their own worst enemy yesterday, St Kilda, in a game they should have won. Look at this one, Jimmy Webster, another one who played a good game. Bad, bad turnovers, panicked at the wrong times. This one's a lazy kick from Sinclair yeah. over the top. And then this one, draw the man. You've got Bradley Hill who's ran for you. Give him a handball yeah. over the top, he kicks the goal. And just a terrible decision as well by Butler. Yep. They sure did butcher it late, Lord. Sometimes you watch a young player and he might have played 30, 40 games. You're not really sure if he's going to make it. I saw a fourth game yesterday, Leo Connolly, and you just saw a couple of things that you know this kid's going to make it. Have a look at that, that in the last quarter on the opposite side. Now, this kid, I haven't seen a lot of him, but not long after that, under pressure, we just watched some senior players uh, turn the footy over. Leo. Just two times he got the ball in the last quarter. Didn't have a lot of the football, four games in, but I'm going to keep an eye on him. What's his background? Uh, well, where's he he from? looks like a footballer. No, Billy. but where's he from? <laughs> not Billy. really sure. Billy's boy. Billy Connolly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Billy, please. Oh, uh, look, really, you should be volcanoed on the back of that. But, Kane, I think you've got another one in this place. Yeah, I do, TJ. So I'm going to volcano the industry. And I'm going to talk about oh, the, the coaches, the umpires, and us in the media because we don't recognise players that don't play in the midfield. I want to take a look at the coaches' votes this year so far. I think it's the award that carries the most weight in terms of accuracy. There's one player that's not a midfielder basically on this list, and that's Max Scorn. Then we're going to look at the last 10 Brownlow medal winners. They're all midfielders, the last 10. So unless you're a midfielder, you can't win the Brownlow medal. You're basically ineligible for winning it. And I think we need to recognise the key defenders, the running halfbacks, the ruckmen in our game. And we've got the opportunity to do that now. So Mitch Georgiades is the favourite for the Rising Star, in my view now. He's kicked 27 goals. He's the second leading goal scorer on a top four side. He probably kicks 35 to 40 for the year. And we need to recognise other players that don't play in the midfield. I think those selectors have a great opportunity to do that. He kicked four yesterday. He's 19 years of age. He's terrific. So let's start recognising the non-midfielders of our game. All right, Kane. Is that a fair Ooh, point? I think Treaders wants some of Kane's best and fairest. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, he, won, he won four. Yeah, yeah. Luke Jackson will be hard to beat as a Kane. forward as well. <laughs> Luke Jackson's played some pretty good football this year as well as a forward. Now, yeah, the Gold Coast Suns. 